Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, I'm delighted to be able to have a word with you today about the campaign for wool. Um, the campaign for wool started uh, exactly, well, just over 10 years ago in January 2010, specifically on Australia Day in a very cold barn in Cambridgeshire, where the Prince of Wales was, I suppose, complaining about having received a very poor wool check. Um, that's not uncommon in the wool industry. But uh, he, thought, he thought that something had to be done, and something had to be done with a Commonwealth dimension. Um, we've done several things for the campaign for war. We've done several events. But I think, taking back in history, as something of a retail curtain raiser to the campaign. We ran a couple of flocks of, uh, or mobs as we say in Australia, of Dorset Horn and Merino sheep on Savile Row in 2010. The whole street was grassed over. And, it, the, and all the tailors on the street participated, but not just tailors, some of the, some of the tailors are, are major international brands. And that was a great launch, and it showed that the symbiotic relationship that uh, the farm and wool has with high-end fashion and high-end tailoring. I think the Prince of Wales was keen to demonstrate that wool had several ecological qualities and several health and safety qualities. So in Clarence House, a couple of years later, we buried a, a, a sweater, one in acrylic and one in wool, and of course the, wool in, uh, the one in wool biodegraded, and not only did it biodegrade it enrich the soil, but we could demonstrate a few months later that the acrylic sweater didn't move at all and was just shaken and taken back to the racks of a well-known store on Oxford Street. Um, the campaign for wool in those early days uh, moved to Tokyo, where we ran sheep on the lawn of the British ambassador and partnered with probably 15 brands in Japan who use uh, wool in all, in, in all its forms, from high fashion to bedding to interiors uh, to carpets. Uh, Multi-use of wool was demonstrated in New York and also in Paris. But I think most important for the campaign for wool has been the retail engagement over, over the years. Retailers have been particularly keen to identify with Prince Charles's ecological message. Now, I remember here in Bradford in 1974, during the oil crisis, Prince Charles warned about the dangers of fossil fuels. He warned the country about the dangers of putting water and, uh, and fizzy drinks into plastic bottles. Um, he was a visionary, and a lot of his work uh, in the ecological field, once I suppose slightly ridiculed, has now been seen as uh, the sign of the times and the wise words of the moment. Uh, Mr. President, let's fast forward to times of COVID. I, I have never known a, a, a situation like this, and I'm sure no one else in the trade has, unless they're particularly old and remember the Second World War. Um, we've seen some terrible situations where mills production has had to be reduced by 50%, sometimes 70% across the board. Prices have uh, dipped. But I think in terms of optimism and in terms of help, the Prince of Wales has come to the fore uh, and wanted to be of particular assistance to the Commonwealth wool producers. Um, and one of the things we did, we um, decided we would make a celebratory scarf for the 10th anniversary. And I've got one here. This is a scarf which was made by Johnson's of Elgin. Uh, in fact, uh, Simon Cotton is going to be our, my guest on, at the Retail Forum later in the week. Johnson's is a mill in the north of Scotland which... Uh, uh, has been around since the uh, 18th century. And the scarf we have here is half designed by the, by the Prince of Wales, assisted by, a by Amy Powney. And wolves come from all the four Commonwealth uh, participants in the campaign. Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and the UK. It's rather smart. The handle is beautiful. Uh, it was sold uh, by Netta Porte and by Johnson's Direct. Um, and we can show you now a little bit of the footage of Prince Charles uh, approving the scarf, which was filmed in, in, in Balmoral in the summer of last year. As patron of the campaign for wool, I could not be more delighted than to celebrate its 10th anniversary with the launch of a, of a new wool scarf designed by Mother of Pearl's Amy Powney and made by that wonderful firm of Johnston's of Elgin. And I need hardly say that it has been produced to 
to highlight the sustainability, the quality and above all the durability of wool. So since 1797 we've been working on this very site, working with the finest woolens in the world uh, to make some of the most beautiful uh, woven pieces in the world. Every single step is reliant on the craftsmanship and the capabilities of our people. And that's really embedded in what we do. It's all about the skills. It's all about looking after those skills for the next generation. And we've got many people in this company who have been here for more than 20 years or who are second or even third generation. So for this particular project, we've put together a completely unique blend of fine wools from right across the Commonwealth. So fine merino from Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, and this blue face Leicester wool from the UK, which is an incredibly soft, warm fibre. It really is of the greatest importance that we educate and inform the next generation of, of makers and consumers of the global benefits of using natural and sustainable resources, including wool, which as a longevity fibre uh, is then followed by its natural return to the soil. So for me, sustainability is the most important conversation that everyone should be having right now. And as a business owner and in my personal life, I work really hard to be as sustainable as I can. Um, I'm working tirelessly in our industry to promote um, the negative effects that the industry has on the planet and the positive things we can do to change that. Most people don't know that the fashion and textile industry is one of the most polluted industries. So for my autumn winter collection, um, I focus a lot on checks and scarves. And when I was asked to do this project, it was sort of a pairing of perfect timing and um, so I took a lot of the research and work I'd already been doing and looked specifically at the Prince of Wales check fittingly for the project um, and then His Royal Highness had asked for a splash of colour to be added so I did a real twist on the classic Prince of Wales with some pops of colour coming through in the pinks and the blues and then there is one that's more traditional in colours but still modern in its design. One of the key parts of the, re of the retail campaign for 2020 was the 10th anniversary Wool Week Student Design Competition. We partnered, and I think it's an interesting combination, we partnered with fashion schools and retail brands. Um, and this is uh, something we did a few years ago uh, to, to great success. And we involved some of the great brands of the UK. John Smedley, for example, partnered with the University of Derby and the winning garment featured in their store on, uh, on German Street. And incidentally, uh, John Smedley, a great user of Merino, has just been awarded the uh, Royal Warrant by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Um, other important brands like Holland & Sherry, the great, uh, the great merchant of uh, fine fabrics, partnered with the Glasgow School of Art. Um, and we, it's interesting to see that Holland & Sherry featured an interior fabric, which was in something uh, a stronger micron, but they, they use the interior fabric as a fashion fabric. And it's interesting to note that uh, worsted material, worsted fabric, is being used more and more in upmarket interiors. It fits beautifully with uh, the, um, well, the sheets you're sitting, that, uh, that, you, that you can see here. Um, we're very pleased to involve also Hackett, uh, the great uh, German street menswear brand, who... Um, Partnered with a mill called Lovett uh, in uh, Scotland, and the design school there was quite quite interesting. It's, it's, uh, it was Harriet Watt University, which I remember in my younger days as the uh, Scottish College of Textile Design. We were particularly delighted that Anderson and Shepherd, one of our original partners on the Savile Row operation in 2010, uh, partnered with Abraham Moon, a mill only about five miles away from where I'm sitting at the moment. 
uh, to create the definitive overcoat, uh, modelled on a coat that was worn by, been worn by Prince Charles for many years. Um, that coat is, uh, is quite stunning, and it, won, and it was a prize that was won, if I can remember correctly, um, by Huddersfield University, a local university here in the, here, here in the north of England. What's particularly interesting with this project is that it illustrates one of the Prince Charles's great passions is that, is that students should participate in competitions and events with a view to getting a job. And I'm delighted to say that several of the students who participated this time are now working for the companies with which they partnered. So uh, a great success in, in, in very challenging times. We partnered with The Floor Story, which is a very avant-garde um, floor covering, uh, hand knotted carpet company that makes the carpets in, in Nepal. And I remember vividly a visit to Nepal uh, where we saw the hand knotted industry uh, in Kathmandu. Um, and it was a partnership with Central St. Martins, which is probably the most avant garde uh, design school in the UK, if not in the world, which where we've seen uh, some of the leading designers uh, graduate. Um, I think probably. Uh, Alexander McQueen is one of the greatest ones, but uh, it's a wonderful combination of, uh, of design and industry. We're very pleased that the design competition extended to New Zealand, and with Massey University, uh, we were delighted to see that uh, Mary Roberts and Lauren Tipper had won with a very, very, very uh, inspirational design for repurposed waste wool yarn with starch to create a type of jiffy bag in wool. Uh, it's a very innovative use of wool and a, a sort of a, a very ecological way to extend wool's uh, biodegradable and natural uh, properties to male packaging. Our campaign for wool partner Cape Wools in Port Elizabeth uh, partnered with the uh, Elizabeth Galloway uh, Academy of Fashion in Stellenbosch to create a very, a very innovative way of using merino in a felted coating and the prize was won by Johann uh, Schultz. Um, and it's a delightful coat which has a very rustic look, but felted and rustic. We're not doing it this year, but we're planning to relaunch the whole thing in 2022 when times are a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. One interesting one is, that, is how we um, illustrate to those that still don't understand that wool next to skin is probably the best thing you can wear. So we partner, we partner with Finisterre. Uh, a brand in Cornwall that is famous for its surfing wear and its next to skin wear and we did that with Nottingham Trent University. So all in all uh, a very interesting if not challenging uh, uh, project during times of Covid but with massive, massive uh, cooperation from industry, uh, brands, spinners, weavers, students and colleges. Wolf, I think you probably know that my father's company was a hand knitting company in Yorkshire uh, they produced uh, yarns for fashion, yarns for infants and babies. And my dad was uh, the pioneer of a brand called Peter Pan, which uh, is based on the J.M. Barry stories. Um, and uh, the company paid a royalty to the Great Ormond Street Hospital, which was the, was the hospital for sick children. So I'm passionately involved in the, in the industry. So I was delighted that Jasmine Helmsley uh, put together a program to teach people how to knit while they were confined or locked down at home. Um, it was a, a lesson for 
anybody of any age uh, with, large, with large knitting needles, with, with, with small knitting needles. And it's part of a, a trend which I'm delighted to see coming back where such luminaries as Russell Crowe, um, several fashion models, several designers for uh, therapeutic purposes sit and knit. And we thought that a program for hand knitting during lockdown would be ideal and it worked extremely well. And we are interested in possibly doing something else with hand knitting next year, but hopefully not in times of confinement and in times of lockdown. Welcome to my new hobby, which is knitting. So this has been my new lockdown hobby, taught to me by my mother-in-law about the weekend before lockdown. I started to knit pennants, which is this kind of triangular bunting, a few holes, that was my very first one. Looks impressive, but it's just like a graduated um, yarn there. Then this one went a bit wrong when my mother-in-law left. This one got better, better still, even better. And I went into stripes, so I'm very pleased with myself. By the way, I should introduce you to my co-host. This is Julie. Julie. Hi. This is Bimmy. Hi, Bimsy. And um, Arjuna is responsible for this wool not being in a ball. I've teamed up with Campaign for Wool to spread the love of knitting and real wool. Knitting is great for positive mental health, um, super calming and... Personally, I found it incredibly good at reducing anxiety, especially at this time. Uh oh, you cheeky boy, you ran! You cheeky! It's natural, it's sustainable, it's good for our skin, and it's good for the health of the planet. Uh, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, what we learnt in the times of the pandemic is that retail was very, very keen to embrace the Prince of Wales' ecological message, and particularly when he addressed the. Um, uh, the, the Davos conference on what they call the reset and the new look and, and, and the new way forward. So we had a, an extensive retail program uh, in autumn of last year. Uh, the main one, of course, was Wolf and Badger, a massive global online uh, retailer who embraced the Prince's ecological message. The program extended to, uh, to German Street, to Hackett, uh, to Brora, the great knitwear company, to John Smedley. Uh, Johnson's of Elgin, um, and, a, and also to Marks and Spencers. Marks and Spencers is a, obviously, we don't need to explain, is a huge retailer, but they were very keen to participate and to push the environmental agenda. You remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Marks and Spencers were our partner at the Dumfries House Conference in 2016. Um, and, it was, the, the, and the Marks and Spencers Plan A, because there's no Plan B, was actually ha hatched here in Bradford by Mike Barry. Um, other retailers participated, the hand knitting companies participated, flooring companies participated. Um, we had a feeling that the Prince's message of environmental excellence was something that they really wanted to accentuate when people were confined and locked down uh, in UK for at least six months. Uh, I think uh, I spoke to a retailer recently who said that his stores had been shut for eight months of during the last 12 months, which is pretty difficult. However, I think that things are moving back to a quasi-normality. Um, stores have reopened. The big debate is what is going to be the relationship between online and bricks and mortar. I think a lot of people would like to get out and see things and touch things. As a textile man, I always feel that you can't buy something unless you've felt it and touched it and tried it. Um, but uh, other people have other views. The history of strong wool over the uh, COVID time has not been a happy one, with prices uh, uh, leaving a lot to be desired, if that's been put diplomatically. Um, we were, however, very interested to hear from Alternative Flooring, who said that they've had one of their best years ever. And this is due to people replacing domestic floor coverings. What hasn't happened, and uh, I fear probably won't happen for a bit, is a revival in the contract carpet business and this is massively important. Uh, cruise ships haven't moved, hotels have been closed, cinemas have been closed, uh, public buildings have been closed. There has been no renewal of floor coverings or interior design in public buildings uh, for the last 12 months. Let us hope that this returns in 2022. Uh, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to share with you some of the Prince of Wales's current thoughts uh, that he has shared with us during the pandemic about the importance of natural fibres, the importance of wool, the importance of what he calls a reset, a rethink about how we live, how we buy fashion, and how we buy our interiors. 
Um, a couple of clips that I think you'll find of, of great interest that reinforces our patrons' commitment to the Campaign for Wolf. We have an incredible opportunity to create entirely new sustainable industries, investing in nature as the true engine of our economy. The current global crisis has disrupted every aspect of our lives. But it has also presented us with an extraordinary opportunity, a chance to reset and accelerate efforts to improve the state of our world. Changing our current trajectory will require bold and imaginative action, together with determination and decisive leadership. In order to secure our future and to prosper, we need to evolve our economic model, putting people and planet at the heart of global value creation. If there is one critical lesson we have to learn from this crisis, we need to put nature at the heart of how we operate. We are on the verge of catalytic breakthroughs that will alter our view of what is possible and profitable within the framework of a sustainable future. We need nothing short of a paradigm shift, one that inspires action at revolutionary levels and pace. We simply cannot waste any more time. The only limit is our willingness to act. And the time to act is now. It is hard to believe that it is now more than 10 years since I first inaugurated my campaign for wool at what I knew was a particularly challenging time for this important rural sector. My hope was that uh, if all the wool-producing nations could come together, and work in a spirit of cooperation, perhaps we could find better ways to market this extraordinarily practical and versatile fibre, and at the same time, help so many hard-pressed sheep farmers. It is now even clearer to me than it was then that natural materials which are not made from fossil fuels are not inflammable and which biodegrade naturally have an important part to play as we face up to the enormous challenges of climate change. So I'm delighted that the message of Wool's inherent sustainability is being celebrated over the coming days, and that in all its diverse end uses, Wool will be highlighted as the fibre of ecological choice. The fact that over 1,000 global brands have now joined the campaign for Wool suggests that the messages of sustainability and biodegradability and the persuasive case for choosing natural rather than synthetic fibres are finally starting to get through to people. They are asking searching questions about the provenance and content of current fashion and everything inside their homes. Only wool provides the ultimate reassurance of sustainability. Well, I have long held the belief that, um, that fashion can play an important role in spearheading a, a movement to promote sustainability. Um, this is a huge industry with global demand for natural and man-made textile fibres set to expand by 84% between 2010 and 2030. Uh, and according to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, uh, textiles production is responsible for something like 1.2 billion tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions annually. That's more than all international flights and maritime shipping combined. So it really is of the greatest importance that we educate and inform the next generation of, of makers and consumers uh, of the global benefits of using natural and sustainable resources, including wool, which, as a longevity fibre, 
uh, is then followed by its natural return to the soil. Uh, it is uh, abundantly clear to me that uh, we need to make changes to the way we think about the production, uh, use and, and the disposal of clothing and textiles if we are going to get anywhere near to meeting the United Nations climate change goals set for, for the industry. And a major part of that change has to be moving from a linear system to a, to a circular one, where textiles and, and clothing are produced sustainably, uh, enjoy long use and, and, and are made using materials which will biodegrade naturally and quickly at, at the end of their useful life. As I said, Mr. President, some of the mills, or nearly all the mills that I know, have suffered the greatest trauma they can remember in commercial history. Um, where do we go from here? Well, things are opening up slowly in the United Kingdom. Things have opened up nicely in China. Things are moving reasonably well in North America. The Campaign for Wool has been talking to a number of key retailers about how they see the situation going forward. And the debate is still there about digital versus brick and mortar. Um, but I think the two will be working together. We'll, we'll go into a hybrid world of, of retail. And the brands that I'm going to mention in, in a moment are ones that we've discussed this whole concept of natural fibres, of sustainability, and real sustainability, not greenwash sustainability. It's sustainability that means environmental excellence. So we're talking to Brewer, we're talking to Next, we're talking to Marks and Spencers, we're talking to Hackett, we're talking to John Smedley, we're talking to Finisterre, we're talking to Johnsons of Elgin, we're talking to Brintons, we're talking to Alternative Flooring and Headland Carpets. <clears throat> and several more are discussing how they can participate in a complete program of for the Campaign for Wool in autumn in the UK and beyond the UK into Canada and into other parts of Europe in the autumn of this year, where we think there will be an element of celebration that people are emerging from what has been 15 months of sheer hell in terms of living, in terms of retail and in terms of business. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. President. I hope you don't mind this rather laid back armchair approach to, uh, uh, to Congress. and. Uh, we live in hope that we will meet each other sometime, somewhere, next year.